hey, let's do some slip decoration. To uh, do this exercise, we're gonna need a few things. First of all, we're gonna need our test cylinders and our test tiles. Um, if you haven't already, make a few extra. Um, it's always helpful to have a few extra in case you think of something you wanna try or in case one gets too dry and you can no longer use it. I'm gonna need my slips. I've given class five colors of slip, um, but I wanna tell you about a different material um, that you can actually go and get on your own that is pretty cool and you can use for this process. And that material is called underglaze. Um, this is the kind that we use on campus. So when we have classes on campus, we're able to provide this to students. Um, but the cool thing about underglaze is that it is very similar to slip. It is essentially liquid clay with colorants added to it, but it is liquid clay with colorants added to it that is made in a lab. And so um, it is one more flexible. So we can only use our slips, um, this type of slip that we're using on leather hard things um, or we can run into some problems. Um, but this you can actually use on things that are leather hard, things that are bone dry and things that have already been bisque fired. Uh, in addition to being more versatile, it also comes in lots of cool colors, a whole rainbow of colors. So this is the bright orange color, and if you are interested or you have a, a particular um, desire to have a certain color that is not in our color palette, you are welcome to order these online. They also come in this size container, and I think this is two ounces, and you can order these um, online. You can also get them at Clay Art Center in Tacoma. So that's just something that you can optionally add to your toolkit. Some water and a sponge. Um, your needle tool and your small loop tool. Metal and wooden rib. Some paper and some cutouts last tool that you can use um, for this process is a hair dryer. I don't love a hair dryer for trying to dry a sculpture because it really only deals with the surface of the clay but for this technique um, because it is on the surface of the clay using a hair dryer to help speed the drying along can be really useful. It is absolutely not necessary though, you can absolutely just wait, and that is what I usually do. Um, but since you're working at home, you might not have as much time and space as you would in the studio. Um, this is a good trick. When you're working with the slips, you want to try to avoid cross-contaminating the colors, and so you just want to make sure you wash your brush off really well between using different colors. Another thing that I do is if I have an idea of what I'm going to be doing, I'll use the white and the yellow earlier and then um, move on to the darker colors because then I have less pigment to wash out. Um, but if you, you know, you don't have a plan, you don't have to make a plan, then you just want to make sure you wash really well um, between your colors. Um, or you could get some other brushes, but again, this is a great versatile brush. Overview of the techniques we're going to learn. I'm going to show you a few examples. So this is one example of Mishima and basically I've carved away, inlaid the yellow slip. This is another example of that, which is a little easier to see. So I have carved away the word Mishima, I've inlaid the slip, and then I've scraped away anything that was outside of where I carved. This is bisque fired, it hasn't been glaze fired. The next technique is Scraffito, and this is where we're going to cover the clay with a color, and then we're gonna carve away so we can see the clay through it. And here are a couple of examples. Um, these are from a student's work, um, so this is, uh, clay with a uh, blue slip and then it's carved away so where the trees and the mountains and the moon are that is just where the clay has been carved away and so the color of the underlying clay shows through. The next technique that we're going to do is a stencil relief and this is where we're going to use paper to make a stencil relief so this tile that I've been showing you is an example of that so I put down blue slip and then I put the paper cutouts on top painted the yellow over and removed the paper cutouts. Here are a couple examples. These are um, bisque but not glaze fired. So I laid the heart paper templates down, put the blue slip over it and removed the paper templates. And here's another example. These lines would be considered scraffito. With this one I did the um, outside of the heart. So the slip went where the heart was, whereas this was the inside of the heart. 
before I get started, I'm just gonna finish cleaning off my test tiles. I'm just gonna clean the edges so that the test tiles look a little tidier like the, this one. With a um, wet sponge, but not too wet, I'm just gonna wipe the edges. And I usually just kind of like let the sponge go all around and firmly wipe. I always call this cleaning. So if I have anything that's like made from slabs, I will clean them in this way until I have a good amount of uniformity. If the sponge gets too full of clay, I'll just move to another part of the sponge or clean off the sponge. Okay, so as we can see now, um, our tiles are pretty leather hard. I would call this soft leather hard. Um, and as you'll see, as we move through these processes, you're gonna wanna um, control drying, and also you're going to be waiting on some drying. So the drying is pretty important to all these processes, uh, which we'll get into in just a minute. So I've got all my test tiles cleaned up. Um, I'm not too worried about cleaning these up, although you may. Um, with these, I've got this nice open area for doing my testing, and we're gonna get into it. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is coverage. So we briefly talked about it when we were working on our pinch pots, um, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about coverage, and it will be a little easier to see because I'm gonna do this part on a test tile. So I'm just mixing up my slip if it separates a little, no big deal. If it gets really thick, you can always add a little bit of water. Again, a little bit at a time because it's easier to add than to take it away. This is the yellow color. So I'm going to put it onto this test tile. Okay, so when I apply this, I'm gonna use this fluffy hot hay brush. And I'm going to apply in one direction to start with. And I can see the texture from the brush strokes and I can also see a little bit of the clay sticking through. So now I'm gonna do a second coat and I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And I can usually get away with doing one more coat. Um, if your slip is on uh, the thicker side, you might not need to, but you can you know, do three coats, no problem. And as you can see, now I have a good amount of coverage. I can't see any clay coming through. And um, I can't see too much of the brush strokes. This is applying slip with a brush, so there will be some brush strokes, but the goal is to get it a pretty smooth, opaque covering. So I'm gonna do that again, and I'm gonna use one of our darker colors just so you can get a better sense of it. Again, if your slip has started to separate, you can just mix it up till it's nice and consistent. If you get a pocket of water, it's just gonna be harder to get the coverage you want. So it's not gonna hurt anything, it's just not gonna look very good. So this slip is a little thicker, so you can see I get a good amount of coverage right off the bat. Um, but you may have noticed in the test tiles that sometimes the black can get a little washed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my three coats. And just the same way, I'm gonna do one direction and then the opposite direction. and then one direction again. Now, you're gonna probably start figuring out that with clay, when we add something that's liquid, things get a little more wet. So this started out as leather hard, but now this top surface is a little bit wetter. So we're gonna let it just hang out and dry. So this one that we did a few minutes ago has gotten nice and um, dry again. And if you get to a point where you find that your slips are too wet and things are getting muddy, uh, as always, just step back, wait for a little bit, let them dry up a little bit. That's always a tactic that we're gonna use in ceramics. <clears throat> While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cover one of my cylinders with the black slip. And I'm gonna do the same thing, one direction. I'm just gonna do half of this the other direction. And as long as it's not too wet, 
I'm gonna go in the other direction again. If it was, I would simply wait a little while and then do it. So I get my three coats. And remember, what you see is what you get. So if you have a lot of texture, you can smooth it out a bit um, because you're gonna see that once it's fired.